Before we delve into the administration of data management, let's look at the basic import, validate and export workflow. I've come into the EPM workspace and I'm now going to go to the Navigate menu, Administer, and down here we find Data Management, which is how we enter FDMEE. Now you'll see two tabs here. The Workflow tab are the basic items that we need to perform our workflow and to edit that workflow, whereas the Setup tab, which would normally be only available to administrators, provides us with all the links necessary for setting up and administering. FDMEE. So for the import, validate and export workflow, we need the data load workbench. And here you can see the main steps of import, validate and export. Check is a check report that we'll be looking at later in the course. Now, first of all, we should note the point of view at the bottom of the screen here. You may notice that the only thing we can click on is the location. However, that does give you then access to these other items, the period, the category, and the rule, and so forth. So I'm going to click on this location here, and now I can use this screen to either search for or type in the location and then the other items here. So I'm going to use the search facility here, now, currently, we only have two locations in our data management or FDME instance. So I'm going to pick Texas, click OK. And I'm now going to pick a period as well, which is January 2018. Now, there's two ways I can do this. I can use the scroll bar here and move up and down the list to find the item I want. Or alternatively, I can use the search facility here and type in January 2018. Then click search and there's my period. So let me select that. I can do the same thing for the category, although in this case I'm going to leave it as FDM actual and likewise for the data load rule. Data load rules we'll be examining in some detail later in the course. Now of course every time I come into data management at the moment I will default to this ESS All Markets location. If I'd like to default to this point of view, then I can simply use this checkbox here. Click OK, and my point of view is set. So now I can go ahead and do the first part of the process, which is to import the data that I want to send through to my target application. So I'll click on Import, and now I can go and select the file name from where my data is coming. Now what you see here is a folder structure which is on the FDME server and I can work down into the inbox and you'll see that there's an inbox for the Texas location. If I click on Texas you'll see that I already have three files in the inbox ready for me to pick up. If the file I wanted wasn't in the inbox, then I could use the Upload button here to go and find that file. We'll be using that later in the course. For the moment, I'm going to pick this file, texas underscore gl dot glo, and this is an output text file from a general ledger system. I'll click OK. And now I can make the choice of whether I want to replace any existing data that's been imported or to append to it. Well, in this case, we have no data, so I'm going to leave it on replace. And then the execution mode that lets us run online, in other words, in front of us and as our main process, or offline, which allows it to run in the background. I'm going to leave this at online. And now when I click OK, the import process will proceed. And there is our imported data. Now, that actually took a few minutes to import. For the purposes of the demonstration, I've cut out that period of time. Now, while the import takes place, the data is also validated in that the mappings are applied to the data. Now, you may notice that whilst we have a goldfish under import, which means that the import finished successfully, 
For validate, we have a gray fish, which indicates that we have some errors. So as you can see, if I hover over the gray fish, it says I've got four errors or errors on four records. You'll see here we have a second tab called validation errors. And if I click on that, there are the four records on which we have an error. Now essentially here, this means we have mapping errors. That indicates that FDMEE has found these source values, in this case for the account dimension, but has found that we have no target accounts for these sources. So to fix these, I need to create some new mappings for these four source accounts. And to do that, I'm going to click on Data Load Mapping here. And here we see the different mappings for each of the different dimensions for the Texas location. We'll be looking at quite a lot of detail later on at mappings, and you'll see that they are location specific. So I'm going to switch to explicit one-to-one -one mappings here and begin by clicking the Add button to add the first of my new mappings. The source value here is 1210. And for my target value, I can either simply type in the target value if I know what that is, or I can use the search button here to go and interrogate the target application for, in this case, the account structure, which would allow me to go through and pick a particular member. So in this case, I'm going to pick this member here, select it and click OK, and there we are. Now I'm going to do the same thing again for one more, which is 1220. And in this case, I'm just going to type in the value. Now the other two mappings I want to make are like mappings. So before I switch to that, I need to come now and click the Save button. And there we are, those new mappings have been saved. Now I can switch to the Like tab. The Like tab makes use of wildcard characters like the asterisk here. So I'm going to click Add for my new mapping. And this one is 1100 asterisk. So any source account now beginning with 1100 will be picked up by this mapping and mapped accordingly. Now the target value, again, I could search for it if I wish, but I happen to know it's the same as the one underneath. So I'm just going to copy that and paste it. Now, like mappings, unlike the explicit ones, need to be given a rule name. So I'm going to call this W1100X72. The naming convention is really up to you and your particular processes. I'm now going to add another like rule. And in this case, it's 1940 asterisk. Now for this one, my target value is PL double one double one double zero and once again I need to give the rule a name and this one I'm going to call W1940X71 and once again now I need to save these new mappings and there we are they have been saved just while we're in this screen you may notice that we have the ability of changing the sign for any of these mappings so that the values are made negative or positive according to their original value. And as we'll see later on, there is the ability to use scripts for these mappings. Right, so I've fixed my mappings now. I can return to the data load workbench where you can see our data still there. It's been imported. Now, I could obviously run the import again and that would apply these new mappings, but of course that will take some time. So instead, I can use the existing data and simply revalidate it here by clicking on Validate. Now again, I have the choice of running that as an online process or as a background process. I'm going to run it now as a foreground process. So if we give that a few moments, that has now returned and given us a goldfish under Validate. 
meaning that we have fixed all of our mapping problems. So we're now ready to go ahead and export this data, the target data here, shown in these columns, through into our target application. So I can just click export. And here now, again, I have the option to replace, merge, accumulate, or replace by security. Now our target in this case is an HFM application. So the modes that you see here match exactly those found in HFM if we were importing data. So I'll click OK and that export will proceed and once again we get a goldfish under export. Now a couple of other things that we can do at this point if we scroll across to the right you will see all the values, the source values that have been used to make up the data that goes through into HFM. And I can click on these. Let's pick this 10,000 value here and do a number of things. If this were coming directly from a general ledger system rather than through a file, I could use the drill through to source to take me back into that source system to see the value there. I can open the source document, which in this case is a file if I wish, or I can look at the mappings to see how those source values have been mapped. So here are our mappings showing each dimension, the type of mapping used, the source and the target. And finally, should we wish, we have a set of reports that we can run. And if I click on Report Execution, you will see that we come to the Report Execution screen. And from here, we can pick a report group. So there are a number of pre-built reports that come with FDMEE, and they're grouped together. In this case, I'm going to pick from the Base Trial Balance reports, and those are then listed here. And I can pick any of these reports to run. I'm going to pick this one and I can then run Execute. Now in this case, I'm actually prompted for some different values for the accounting period, the category, the location, and the rule used. And again, I can pick those using the search items here. Finally, you've got some different formats in which the report can be published. And again, you can choose to run it as a foreground process or a background process. So all that you'd need to do then is to click OK for the report to be generated. So that's the whole import, validate and export process that would chiefly be used by your users. And as I've said, many of those areas will be examining in greater detail later in the course.